Good morning, everybody, and welcome to you to our service today. And um, it's good to see you all in church, and welcome to those who are joining online at home. Big thank you to those who took part and donated time and money and energy at the fundraising appeal yesterday, the fundraising brunch for the Syrian Turkey appeal, and um, the current total is £605, but there's some, been some more donations being received this morning, so we'll let you know next week what the final total is. It's, it's a very good sum was raised for that very worthy cause, and it was good to see the church hall so busy yesterday. Um, I was noticing some reverberation with the, with the amplification system. Other notices, there's tea and coffee. from the other one it may be, be, be better be better um, there's tea and coffee in the church hall um, after the service all are invited to remain for fellowship there um, on Tuesday we have the Bible study and prayer meeting in the hall at 7pm studying starting to look at the book of Colossians Wednesday is the knit and natter as usual at 2 p.m. And Friday we begin the Friday warm space where the church will be open from about 11 and over lunch time and where all are welcome to come and just be there and there will be um, soup and other refreshments um, which have already been paid for so there's no charge for coming and no charge for, for the food. intimations um, um, and um, we turn to the service sheet and there are words that we say together from 1 Corinthians chapter 13 um, we say them together now these three I don't have it with me but um, Now faith, hope, and love abide, and the greatest of these is love. Let's worship God and sing to his praise. Um, we begin with 920, Praise the Lord, you heavens adore him. <laughs>
blessing. Join the Savior to proclaim as the saints in heaven adore you. We would bow before your throne. join together in prayer. O Lord of all and Father of mercy, how great you are, great is your name. You are altogether worthy of praise, worthy to be worshipped and adored. Lord, we exalt you, we praise you, we tell of your marvellous goodness. Your love is great, so great, so amazing. Your mercies are sure. You have drawn near to us in your redeeming love. Lord, it is our delight to be in your presence, for with you there is joy and blessedness. And we thank you that in this hour of worship we can come together before you and find ourselves in your care and goodness. To be in your house, Lord, it is a blessed thing. We thank you for the church, for the faith, for the gospel, for your people, that you have drawn us to yourself and made us your people. You alone are God and we give the glory unto you. But Lord, as we reflect upon our life experience, we know there is much that we would have done differently. We come recognising that so often we have not lived our Christian lives wholeheartedly. Forgive us, Lord, when we did not do what you wanted us to do. Sometimes we held on to petty resentments or feelings of envy or dwelt in self-pity. At times our actions and words fell far short of what your love requires. In your mercy, Lord, forgive us and set us free to begin again. We thank you, Lord, for the scripture that tells us that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. May we know what it is to be made whole, to be restored, forgiven. May your blessed Spirit do a powerful work in us to help us live by faith so that indeed we are living by faith and victory. And we offer our prayer in the precious name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. This bit of the service of um, in the service sheet I put a, a contemporary Christian witness and Tony and um, Ray Ireland who have come to our congregation recently have kindly agreed to come and say a little bit about their own experience and who they are in their faith so I invite you to come forward now. As I was growing up, 
Our family was not practicing Christian, so we never ever went to church if it was for weddings or funerals. Um, when I came to my twenties, um, I found myself searching for purpose and meaning. Um, I never felt very good about myself or who I was. Um, at times I felt very lost and lonely in this troubled world. Um, I made wrong choices and became consumed of what um, people thought of me and how the world was. I turned to different approaches, Buddhism, etc., but never felt complete, always wondering who I was. I went to a church in Manchester one Sunday and thought I felt very welcome and alive. I have since gone to churches and now my, find myself with, a, with purpose and hope in my life. My favourite verse is Matthew 6.25 Therefore I let, I let, you, do, let you do not worry about your life. I have been made very welcome by the church and the community and I'd like to say thank you to everybody for all that you've done for me and Lee so far and praise God. Thank you. Uh, good morning everyone. My name's Lee, I'm Tony's husband if you didn't know already. <laughs> Um, I, my testimony um, is I was brought up in a Christian family, um, so I was raised going to Sunday school, um, and went to church pretty much every week, um, and I gave my life to Jesus as a Christian when I was pretty young, seven or eight years old. Um, but at that age, I don't think I really understood. What, I, what it meant. I knew I wanted to be a good person and uh, I understood Bible stories and things like that, but I was so young I didn't really understand what it fully meant, so I'm not sure if I really did, but I believed what I said and I, I was a Christian in my mind, but then I grew up, I went to college, uh, started making my own way in life, and I basically just drifted away from it all that. I didn't go to church, I didn't pray every day, I didn't read my Bible at all. I just thought, I, I just did life on my own. I went on making money, making friends, going out drinking, things a normal 21 year old young person does and then looking for a job and life gets, gets in the way of everything and you get, start getting dragged down. So I was, at one point later on in life I was in a bad way, got depression and I was really low. Um, but there was a few verses that stuck in my mind from Sunday school that I kept holding on to. Um, Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world was one of them. And I was really looking for a way out. I was on antidepressants and things, other tablets. I was at a really long point and I decided to make a big decision that, that when I gave my life at a seven year old and I drifted away and then I'd come back again and decided to really do it properly as an adult to understand all the sacrifices and gifts that have been given that I had ignored all those years. Um, so I was like a prodigal son really the story of the prodigal son, which I've realised isn't really about the son. A lot of people think it's just about, you know, him going away, sinning and coming back and being forgiven, but I think it's more about the father and his steadfast love that you can always go back to and be accepted. Um, and I got baptised about a year before I got married to Tony. Just under a year we got married 
five years ago um, when I got baptised just before that I uh, decided to make a real go of being a Christian person um, I'm hoping to be a member of this church we're both hoping to be a member so it's uh, all to look forward to so thank you for listening and God bless you. Thank you, Tony and Leigh, for sharing your faith or something of your faith and experience with us today. Um, later in the service, I'll speak about I'll, a wee bit more about Jane Haining. It is a misprint on the order of service that's spelt with an N. But let's pray just now. Father God, we thank you that you have drawn us to yourself and revealed your Son to us. We thank you that you have shown us your forgiving and redeeming love and for the joy of knowing Christ as Lord and Saviour. Now bless us as we continue to worship you and draw us deeper into you. In Jesus' name, Amen. We turn to 748, the hymn, What a Wonderful Change in My Life.
of the city beyond I can see since Jesus came. loved by God, that he has chosen you, because our gospel came to you, not simply with words, but also with power, with the Holy Spirit and deep conviction. You know how we lived among you for your sake. You became imitators of us and of the Lord, for you welcomed the message in the midst of severe suffering with the joy given by the Holy Spirit. And so you became a model to all the believers in Macedonia and Achaia. The Lord's message ran out from you, not only in Macedonia and Achaia. Your faith in God has become known everywhere. Therefore, we do not need to say anything about it. May God add, God add to this reading blessings from his holy word. Amen. And now we pray together. Let us pray. <coughs> Dear Father God, you have made us and you know us. You are the creator and sustainer of all that is. In Jesus Christ, your Son, you have revealed your undying love for each one of us. Help us to reflect on your words in the scriptures we hear today. And give us the faith and courage to follow Jesus. 
in the way of active engagement with the world for justice and an equal sharing of all that brings fullness of life to each human being. Save us from the temptation of making gods of our possessions or status, or misusing the power we hold over others. Guide us by your Holy Spirit to a deeper understanding of our joyful dependence on your love. O God, the refuge and strength of all, you hold all the peoples of the world in the palm of your hand. In war-torn and devastated communities, the names of your children are written on your heart. In the darkness of invasion and in the mire of political machinations, spread we pray the light of hope and of justice and peace. Encourage those who are frightened to find strength in you and in those around them, both near and far. Help the worldwide family of nations to respond in love with outstretched hearts and open minds, and with too the wisdom needed to effect a peace that lasts. Save us, we pray, from not caring enough. For your mercy. In our prayers for others, we remember those who are ill and for those in residential and care homes, especially Mary, May, Marion McKinney, John, Isabel, Jesse, Howard. Brenda, Moira, and Pat. And on this two, day too, we remember friends who have been bereaved and those who have come to the anniversary of the death of a loved one. We remember those who struggle with life and prayer and faith. Hear our prayers we humbly ask. As we now say together the Lord's Prayer, Our, Our Father, who art, art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will, will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine, thine is the kingdom, kingdom and the power, power and the and glory forever. Amen. Amen. So we sing now hymn number 759 when the trumpet of the Lord.
Let us pray, Father God, as we look at your word today. We pray that we would learn something, something that helps us and that prompts us and encourages us. Pray for your blessing in our lives and in our church. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, the frosty starts that we've been having in the past few days, or some of the past few days anyway, are not unusual for this time of year. The, the ground has not frozen terribly hard and soon the temperature rises again during the daytime. I always like to look back at what the Reverend Alexander Stewart wrote um, a long time ago. He wrote his Nether Lacaber and he was always a keen observer of the seasons. And one time at the end of February and Early March in 1871, he noticed a fall of snow, a keen fall of, a heavy fall of snow. Well, we're told that snow is forecast here in a few days. And three nights of frost. He also noticed the aurora borealis, which some people saw over at Balahulish a few days ago. But he said, the March sun soon brings a return to the feeling of spring. And that prompted him to quote a Gaelic proverb, Aum fer nach cur sa varst sanamoch avwanashe, which translates, He who sows not in March shall have a late in gathering. I suppose for people and communities that rely on the land for a livelihood, there's a message there. But it also can apply to the Christian life. The time to do things is often now. We tend to put things off. And so it's good that we're proceeding quickly, I suppose, with starting the warm space in the church hall on Fridays. And reading speaks of Christian work inspired by and arising from our Christian faith, hope and love. And all that is a testimony to the reality of Christian experience. When we are in Christ, when we know Christ as Lord, God's power starts to work in us. We have a new life, a new life in Christ and work to do. And Christian work includes the mundane and thankless tasks without which the church and its mission wouldn't really happen. Last week, I was a Christian missionary, Jane Haining. I've got a picture of her here, um, a photograph of, of her. Um, I think was taken in the 19th, late 1930s. She was originally from Dunscore, near Dumfries. Um, she experienced a real sense in her early adult life that um, her life, uh, interest in the church's mission to the Jews. And she went to hear a, a, a missionary address um, in Glasgow as a young woman. And she came home saying, I have now found my life's work. And that life's work took her to Budapest. Um, she, was, she had to be interviewed by the Church of Scotland Committee, as people always do, I suppose. And they were impressed by her language skills, that she could speak German. And that stood her in good stead, and she would also learn in time to speak Hungarian. 
her work, work was as matron or house mother of the Jewish mission school in Budapest. Her love for the children was exemplary. Her life told for the Saviour. And she showed and demonstrated Christ's love by her solidarity with the Jewish families and the Jewish children. And that came at a great cost in the years of increasing anti-Semitism and persecution of the Jews that began in the, 18, in the 1930s and continued during the wartime. But she refused to return home to Britain during the war years, saying that if the children need me, needed me in the hours of sunshine, how much more do they need me in the hours of darkness? And she was to remain with the children. One of the things that um, she was later charged with was that when the children had to, the Jewish children had to sew yellow um, stars onto their garments, um, they, they often were crying as they did that and Jane wept with them. And that sign of her love and solidarity with her people, with the Jewish people, um, was one of the reasons why she was um, sent to Auschwitz where she ended her life. Perhaps suffering sometimes is the reality of following Jesus, Jesus who identified with us in our so sorry condition, who and paid the price for our salvation on the cross of Calvary. Paul, in this passage, speaks of God's message sounding forth from Christian lives. And the life of Jane Haining was a powerful example of Christian love in action. Our life, God's message or God's word, can sound forth from our lives. The word that that Paul uses in the text suggests the idea of an echo. But an echo can be clear or an echo can be muffled. And that makes us think what sort of a message resounds forth from our Christian lives. As we read in another passage, if the trumpet give an uncertain sound, who shall prepare himself for battle? The Thessalonian believers were a model or an example to the believers in Macedonia. And here the Greek word that Paul uses suggests the idea of striking a blow or leaving a mark, leaving an impression as you might do with a mould or a seal or a stamp. In the house I've got a seal, not a seal but a stamp with the church's name on it and an ink pad which I sometimes use. In our Christian lives, we can make a mark, leave an imprint, strike a blow, be a model or an example of Christ's love. Our lives can bear the stamp of the teaching of Jesus. His message can leave an impression on our lives and on our character. And the words and commands of Jesus should shape our community our church, so that others see in us a good way to live. Jesus said, if you have love one for another, then everyone will know that you are my disciples. The key to it is in the power of God's Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit brings both an awareness of our need for Christ and the power of a new life in Christ. When we discover Christ as Saviour, we discover the wonderful peace of God. We need to stop holding back and allowing the Lord to have his way amongst us. 
We need to allow the Holy Spirit to work more freely in us, individually and together. Perhaps we can ask the Lord or ask God's Spirit, what fruit and what gifts are you giving me? Despite all the ups and downs of life, there is joy and happiness as we follow Jesus. Even in her final letter written from Auschwitz, Jane Haining wrote home, and she had to write in German, that was the rule that the people in the concentration camp had to write letters in German. And she wrote in German, and it translates that even on the way to heaven, there are mountains but further away than ours. Perhaps she was thinking or remembering the hill country around Dumfries. But the German word that she uses, Himmelsgang, um, was a particular word used in Christian literature that speaks about the borderline between heaven and earth. Even as she faced the reality of, of, of ending her days in that concentration camp, on the way to heaven, there was joy in her heart. Jane Haining lived in a particular time, in a particular unique set of circumstances, different from our own, and yet she made her mark in a very powerful way. One of her nieces would later reflect on how it only takes one person to make a difference. And perhaps our lives can be the one, we can be the one person who may make a big difference in a particular setting or situation we are in. A life surrendered to God has its fruits in confidence, trust, an awareness of the power of God, a, fir a firm conviction in the truth of the gospel. Jesus once said, how blessed are those who have no doubts about me. Indeed, how blessed we are when we put our whole faith and trust and confidence in, in Jesus Christ. He never lets us down. We can always trust him. His words always make sense. The words of Jesus can never be shown to be other than true. I would defy anyone to prove otherwise. And when we trust the Lord unreservedly, holding nothing back, then there's great joy and peace that comes our way. And we know that our lives are held secure in his care. Shall we pray together? Loving God, we thank you that as the church and as your people, we can show forth your love in the world and be an example of what it is to be your people. We pray that our Christian lives in the weeks, days and weeks ahead may truly leave an imprint on the, our community and village and on those we meet. Inspire and empower us by your spirit of grace and holiness that we may live lives for you in the joy and happiness that you give through Christ our Lord. Amen. And so our closing hymn 501, O Jesus, I have promised.
my master and my friend. I shall not fear the battle if thou art by my side, nor wander from the pathway if thou wilt be my guide. Oh, let me feel thee near me, the world is ever near. I see the sights that dazzle the tempting sights that hear. My foes are ever near. Around me and within, but Jesus draw the nearer and shield my soul from sin. Oh, let me be speaking in accents clear. Still, above the storms of passion, the murmur so self will. Oh, speak to me, assure me to hasten or control. Oh, speak. And make me listen, thou guardian of my soul. O oh, Jesus, thou hast promised to all who follow thee that where thou art. In glory, there shall thy servant be. And Jesus, I have promised to serve thee to the end. Oh, oh, give me grace to follow. My master and my friend. Oh, let me see thy food marks and in them plant my own. Hope to follow duly. Guide me, call me, draw on me, uphold me to the end. And then, then, and receive me, my Savior and my The peace of God, which is beyond all understanding, guard your hearts and thoughts in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain with you and with all whom you love, both now and forevermore. Amen. God. As you trust in